I think it's safe to say that Xbox Game Pass in 2021 has changed a lot since this time last year, as have my videos. This was the 2020 version of my Xbox Game Pass list, which took me about two weeks to edit, and this was the end result. Boy, now I have a green screen and a world of opportunity at my feet, which probably means this video is gonna take two weeks to edit as well, but that's okay because its premise is the same as last year. Xbox Game Pass has a huge variety of choice, and now even more in 2020 as the acquisitions keep rolling in and our doors to the outside world remain closed. The longer the pandemic goes on, the more I wonder if I'm really ready to go outside again. I think my social skills may be a bit rusty at this point. Oh, oh no, Dawn, you know I don't drink. Huh? Just give it, she gave me some wine and I went, no, I don't drink. <laughs> Do you not drink? <laughs> this video is the broadest possible look at the Xbox Game Pass library, and it's for those of you who are as indecisive as me when it comes to choosing a game to play, who are hesitant to download a new game for fear it will be a waste of time, and for those of you new to Game Pass, who don't even know where to start. Game Pass has returned to me that feeling of excitement bordering obsession with a newly discovered game, a feeling that honestly I thought had left me at this point. A presence I've not felt since. Since flipping through the game manual on the drive home from Game Station or my morning paper round on the day Arkham City dropped, I have never pedaled so hard in my life. Hey, where are you going? It's when a game is all you can think about, whether you're playing it or not, and I call this feeling the bunny moon period, named after this adorable rabbit on a controller and because not that many things rhyme with honey. If the bunny moon period fades sooner than expected, I start questioning all my decision making and before I know it, it's 2 a.m. I've been sat looking at my downloads for 20 minutes and all I can come up with are excuses why not to play each game and I call this feeling game overload because game over of an overload of choice is better than f***ing bunny moon period. To avoid game overload you have a few options. You can stick to a handful of games that you know you like but this kind of defeats the point of game pass because not only are you missing out on loads of great games but you're probably wasting your money. You can try and find out more about a new game but within the game pass app this is kind of difficult because at your disposal is the forever bias game description or the forever amusing but entirely unhelpful user reviews. <laughs> A game, zombies in this game. Gears is great, brilliant. Can play music with friends. Not a five star game, but a four. However, earlier reviews when unplayable, misbalanced, so it is a five. 343, plus fix. Halo is a schmexy game. Monkey Monkey, ooh, I hat eat this game, makes me sad, ooga banoogie. Or three, you can watch this video. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm an oracle of knowledge when it comes to Game Pass, but I have spent um, a borderline sad amount of time categorizing the game library and I've basically put it together like this. Every genre on Game Pass lets you filter by a subgenre, which is pretty useful, but I think a better distinction is mood. In those long dark nights I'm suffering from pangs of game overload, the pervading thought is just, I'm not feeling it. So what am I feeling? Well, as the psychologists in the room will certainly agree, we don't know, but it sure isn't good. But I can tell you what I want to feel when I play a video game, challenged happy, emotional, excited, chilled, or distracted. And I think this is a better categorization than genre because I don't wake up in the morning thinking I really wanna play an RPG. I wake up thinking I want some coffee. And then I think I wanna play a good game first and foremost. And then I want to play something that relates to my mood. So they are the categories for this definitive Xbox Game Pass 2021 list. Um, and now, our local correspondent, Sam, with the details. Well, just before we get started, um, we'll say that this is the entire Xbox Game Pass library, console and PC, so if you only have one or the other, look out for this uh, icon symbol to say that it's on console, this icon slash symbol to say it's on PC, or this symbol 
to say it's on EA Play, which is currently only on console for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscribers. It will come to PC for PC, Game Pass for PC subscribers at some point. Uh, it was supposed to be in December, Xbox delayed it, and we haven't heard anything since. So let's start with the game's most critical function, which is to provide a challenge. Now in these games, that challenge is shooting the other team. In this game, it's shooting everyone. In this game, it's fighting people with magic and swords and spells. And in this game, it's fighting people with fists and the knees and your head, I think. I don't really know the rules. How many of these would I play personally? Well, probably just these three. Maybe this one, if Ninja Theory added some more content to the game, but since it's released last year, it's been stagnant, which is a bit of a shame. But until Halo Infinite comes out, I'll take my challenges solo. Thank you very much. Just me versus the game. And we've got plenty of those too. Celeste is a strong test of your movement skills, the mountain path growing more perilous the higher you climb. Hollow Knight is a strong test of your combat skills, swarms of enemies hidden in a rotting underground maze. Dishonored 2 asks you to maneuver through levels using a variety of abilities to do so undetected, while Doom Eternal asks you what combination of weapons and attacks will let you clear this room of 100 demons in the most frantic and coolest way possible. And then we have the challenges that are the slow burners. City Skyline tasks you with building an entire city with a level of detail that just manages to refrain from feeling like real work, which is the mark of any good simulator. Frostpunk tasks you with the same city building, but in sub-zero temperatures and with a bunch of citizens that I think just don't like you that much. And Gears Tactics tasks you with clearing out locusts in a much more methodical way than other games in the series, and surprisingly, I think I prefer it this way. What else should we ask of games other than to make us happy? If you find a game that strikes joy in your heart, I pray you don't let it go, no matter what the haters oh, say. Sorry. Okay, that's your permission from me to play Disneyland Adventures. <laughs> the games in this category prioritize fun over everything else, which is jolly nice of them. Uh, some of these games, the fun is meant to be had with friends. Overcooked 2 and Moving Out are traditional couch co-op games. Uh, not just because they provide that quirky, silly kind of fun, but also because the Game Pass versions don't provide online co-op, which is just what we need in the middle of a pandemic. Worms WMD is for those of you who would rather blow up your friends than help them move house. And Jackbox Party Pack 4 is the gauntlet for all your friends that think they're the funny ones. This is your time to prove it. Personally, I've never been more familiar with the bottom half of the leaderboard. That's a metaphor for my entire life. But there is fun to be had on your own as well. Dragon Quest XI is an unapologetically obvious hero tale of good versus evil and monsters so cute you almost don't want to kill them. Cricket 19 is for the small minority who enjoy cricket and enjoy cricket games and appreciate that they're kind of bad but they're that funny kind of bad. And Disneyland Adventures is for the even smaller minority who are over the age of seven and still like to play Disneyland Park Simulator with the Kinect. <laughs> it couldn't be more of a gimmick, but I love it. If you're too poor to come to the actual park, just come and play with the Mickey Mouse. <laughs> this is a pretty broad category because every mood stems from an emotion, but I'm talking about games where you really want to feel something, which basically boils down to those with a good story. Control, like the best Christopher Nolan films, will leave you confused throughout pretty much the duration of its runtime, and I mean that in a good way. There is nothing wrong with going onto Wikipedia after you finish something to go and figure out what it is you just saw. Outer Wilds will combine confusion with awe, Oxenfree will double down on the confusion and offer up one of the most authentic sounding and feeling uses of dialogue that I've played, and Subnautica will combine confusion with terror. Among Us will shoot some adrenaline into your veins while what remains of Edith Finch will fill you with a melancholy sadness. Hellblade will open you up to the pains of psychosis while Tell You Why will show you the struggles of a transgender sibling, and Pandemic the board game is for only the most satirical and sadistic among you. Excitement is another feeling that can take many forms. You can have excitement via terror, 
Resident Evil 7 is a by-the-book horror, Alien Isolation offers up helpings of science fiction, and Dead by Daylight is for those who believe in safety in numbers and also don't mind their friends hearing the sounds of their screams. You can have excitement via action. Descenders is a fast-paced, freewheeling, bicycle racing game. Batman Arkham Knight has you have a load of the Batman. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order gives you a load of being the Star Wars. And Monster Hunter World lets you bash monsters over the head with comically large weapons. Dead Cells and Enter the Gungeon generate excitement by giving you a massive range of awesome weapons that make you feel like a total boss. And you have excitement via world building, but Skyrim and The Witcher 3 obviously need no explanation at this point. And you have excitement via those moments when you're like, wait a minute, this game is cool as fuck. Wait a minute, this game is cool as fuck. I can't remember when this type of game became a thing, but it's definitely one people gravitate to. Um, and there's loads of options on Game Pass. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 lets you really kick back and relax when you have to fly a plane for seven real-time hours. Astronia and No Man's Sky use the vastness of space to create aimless and blissful exploration with some light and heavy survival management mixed in. Haven takes a super smooth and silky gameplay mechanic and weaves it through a cheesy love story, while East Shade will wrap you up so tightly in the lives of its anthropomorphic characters that you forget that this is an RPG with no combat and how many other RPGs can you think of like that? And Spiritfarer is maybe the most chilled game I've ever played and I love it dearly. <laughs> Sometimes games are there to engulf you and other times they're a distraction the same way you might put something on to watch in the background while you actually just browse Twitter or to go full circle, play a video game. So, distraction games. We've got Battlefront 2. It's all about the Star Wars. The Sims 4. It's all about domesticals. Madden 20. Well, it's about football. FIFA 20. It's about football. Mirror's Edge. We free running up the walls and skate 3. We've got ragdoll physics. <laughs> I think I hate myself now more than I did a couple of minutes ago. You may have noticed how all of these are EA games, which kind of says a lot. Uh, these two, you might say, if you want to play them more competitively, you obviously need to focus, which is fair. But I've put them all in this group because they have a clear a gameplay loop that is addictive, but it's also easy to detach from. And I'm not taking anything away from them. They're all good games. They just happen to be all made by EA. But then there are the games that are so chilled, they are too chill even for the chilled category. Games like golf with your friends because it's more about chatting with your friends than playing golf, viva piñata because what's more relaxing than gardening, and chocolate unless you're playing Trouble in Paradise when you have the evil piñata that will trespass into your garden at night and eat the sick piñata alive. Yeah, you thought this was a kid's game? Well, you're wrong. Then you have Minecraft, because you know, it's Minecraft, and Spiritfarer sometimes leaks into this category um, if I'm in the heavier base management side of the game. But for the most part, it has a really lovely soundtrack and an engaging story, which means I wanna keep my full attention on it. Games like Spiritfarer and a fair few others I've mentioned have their fingers in multiple mood pies but I can associate them with one genre over another. Uh, but there are certain games, much like me, after one too many glasses of wine, which will swing quite erratically to different moods. Solo Sea of Thieves offers chilled exploration with random encounters that offer a surge of excitement, the threat of a kraken or a rival ship coming to steal your stuff. The multiplayer amplifies Three, these moods and adds happy, sailing the ship uh, as a crew is a lot more fun than solo and you can find other crews that instead of trying to sink your ship just want to chill out drink some rum and sing some sea shanties together oh my god he was right exploration is an underlying theme in a lot of these games but it's the mass effect trilogy that best feeds it through the lens of story world building and character development now there's a remastered trilogy coming in March, which I'm pretty sure will come to EA Play, and I'm praying will come straight to the base subscription so we can also get it on Xbox Game Pass straight away. That is a little unlikely, but I'm holding out hope. But in the meantime, you can play the original games 
on Game Pass. Will of the Wisps is challenging and exciting in its chase sequences and boss battles, but the movement ties everything together so smoothly that I never found it frustratingly difficult. Also, whenever I see this and hear this, it makes me feel incredibly chilled. And underneath all of that is an emotional story. So that's why Ori and the Will of the Wisps was the best game on Game Pass in 2020. That was actually more of an excuse to pick out some of my favorite games I'm playing on Game Pass right now. Um, the truth is that a lot of the games I've mentioned do bridge between moods, and that's what makes good games great. The fact that we want to play them whatever mood we're in, and sometimes it might just change our mood for the better. <sighs> so that covered just about all the games on Game Pass that I've played or am playing. There is a lot that I still haven't covered, but you know, I couldn't be here forever. This new method of standing up and using a green screen is pretty exhausting. And the truth is I did this all already before realizing that the camera was out of focus. So I definitely need a lie down now. My next Xbox Game Pass video will be the start of a new series that I'm doing. Does this look like I'm laying down because this hurts my legs? Um, is basically gonna be a roundup of all the games I've been playing for the month. The idea being we can get a bit of a conversation going about the games I'm playing, which ones I like, which ones I recommend, and hopefully you can do the same and we end up playing the same games and we just have a great time. <laughs> but that didn't sell it to you, did it? This month is probably gonna be Spiritfarer, Call of the Sea, Sea of Thieves, um, East Shade, Haven, a lot of cell shaded art styles, which um, is fine by me. So um, if you've played any of those games, let me know in the comments or let me know what games you're playing on Game Pass right now. And they very may well feature in a future episode. Um, so if you like the sound of that, please give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And I don't know, just post a comment being like, like your green screen, that's it. I've probably gone on for quite long enough. So thanks for watching you guys. Thanks for making it to the end of the video as always. And I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.